The time has come. A very warm welcome to Rexroth on Air, our first virtual product show. My name is Maxi Savas, and I'm happy that you found the time to tune into our session. Today, it's all about hydraulics. To be precise, about connected hydraulics, and you can expect the unexpected here. During the next one and a half hours, you will find out what connected hydraulics have to offer beyond the classic hydraulics. And green what? Well, this is obviously a question, but at the same time, this will also be the answer to how Rexroth's products will help you to become more sustainable. Did you know that it's Rexroth's 225th anniversary this year? So how sustainable is that? It looks like Rexroth never stops moving. This is revolutionary excellence, and I can't wait to discover the latest developments of the industry together with you. So guys, I think you're all tech savvy and prepared, so let me introduce some interactive features. At the bottom right side of your screen, you find an emoji meter. Anytime you want to express a quick feedback about a show, a product, or what maybe I am doing here on stage, then please press the button and send us an emoji. From time to time, we ask you directly for your opinion, then the emoji meter transforms into a multiple choice poll. And we offer a download area. There we provide you with further information about specific products and solutions. And you can find also the making of film of our anniversary movie there. So yes, we have high ambitions for you. And we are doing so because we believe that we can only become better together. And this is why we value your opinion. We have live Q&A sessions for each and every product category. Simply drop a question down into the live window. Due to our privacy policy, all questions will be anonymized, so we can't get back to you directly. In case that your question won't be answered during the Q&As, then simply go to the experts chat so that we activate right away after this live session and discuss your issue directly with one of our product experts. So, you want to learn more about the latest technologies? Then stay tuned and explore more. You are connected from all over the world. And Bosch Rexroth is a global partner being represented in more than 80 countries. So let's hear about the situation in your country. So, wow, oh, it's ringing. Okay, so here we go. Hello. There is Maxi from Rexroth on air. Hi Maxi, nice Hi, to meet you. Hello. So let's start directly with Northern Europe. May you introduce yourself? Absolutely. Thank you, Maxi. My name is Frederick Nilner and I'm responsible for sales up here in Europe North. Mm -hmm. So when you are in discussions with customers, what is their main issue? Well, there are many main issues, of course, but uh, one key driver right now is sustainability. And talking about sustainability, we see the impact of uh, in complex solutions like hydraulic power units to be able to use our online tools, to be able to simulate and to be able to make sure that you have the right solution for your targets before you get going physically. That's really key right now. So thank you very much, Frederik. Let's go to the southern part Welcome. of Europe. Hello, Maxi. Pleasure being with you today. So my name is Matthias Goebel and I'm general manager at Bosch Rexroad in Southern Europe. So Matthias, besides sustainability, what are the major concerns of the customer in your region? Well, um, as you know, our markets have been facing a complex period with social distancing measures and tight travel restrictions. This is particularly relevant when it comes to manufacturing operations and equipment maintenance. End users and OEMs switch whenever possible to predictive analytics and remote diagnostics to increase machine availability and to minimize the downtimes despite the distances. Mm -hmm. And so. once they see how good it works, they stick to it. Yes, exactly. I think we can show them a lot on that topic today. So let's turn to Mid-Europe. Yeah, hi Maxi. I'm Patrick Roth from Germany. I'm responsible for sales industrial hydraulics. 
So, Herr Patrick, you must be familiar then with the famous German engineering. What drives them? Yeah, our engineers know that hydraulics have unique torque and force, but they sometimes worry about the energy consumption. They are often surprised how much energy they can save with our Satronic solutions. A second major requirement is of course Industry 4.0, but connected hydraulics make our technology digital visible. Just think on digital services like Citro Connect. Yes, and we will see this later on. Thank you very much. I can also see Arkadius from Poland. Yes, hello Maxi. This is Arkadius. I'm responsible for sales in industrial application. Mm -hmm. So, how do your customers see hydraulics in the future? We have the same feedback in here. Customer need to streamline their commissioning. Setting 12 parameters with an app without the machine, using the machine controls, is exactly what they want. Mm -hmm. Yes, we will hear more about it later. For the moment, thank you very much for your insights and enjoy the show. Thank you, Maxi. It was a pleasure. Enjoy the show. <laughs> so for me, thank you very much. Bye. So ladies and gentlemen, there's an overall trend towards energy efficiency and the use of digital technology technologies. But has hydraulics really made a progress or is it just cosmetics? Well, we have to discuss this in deep. We have to discuss about Green Watt with uh, the Vice President, Global Sales Industry, Sector Sales and Product Management, Martin Vogelsanger. So hello, good to have you here in our famous, uh, beautiful virtual studio. Good to be here, Maxi. Thank you. So you're so familiar with uh, the trends and drivers of the industry. You are part of the Rexroth family for more than 25 years now. Right. So can you tell us a bit more about the trends of the industry? Well, first of all, our customers look for giving added value to their customers and have a differentiation from their competition. In general, our customers face mega trends and market trends like global, more transparent and volatile markets, connectivity, climate change, energy reduction, focus on cost reduction in the matter of total cost of ownership, connectivity and of course ease of use of products or shorter product life cycles. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to high forces and robustness, then hydraulics definitely seems to be the right technology. Can you tell us a bit more about the future trend of electrohydraulics? Well, in electrohydraulics, we already see and in future even more an overproportional growth and need of the market. And electrohydraulics is a combination out of hydraulics technology with electrics technology with connectivity capabilities. Means we combine the best of two worlds, the robustness and power of hydraulics with the intelligence and connectivity of electrics. And that's what we call connected hydraulics. Mm -hmm. So it sounds really promising. Well, what exactly is the target then of connected hydraulics? Well, we as Rexroth being the market leader in industrial hydraulics, we do want to drive this change towards electrohydraulics and connectivity. And this is based on our unique portfolio we are offering to our customers of uh, products, modules, uh, systems, uh, projects and services, being a solution provider with a unique application know-how. So with all of your know-how that you have with the development, what are the concrete requirements? Well, first of all, it's being ready for Industry 4.0, means IoT integration. It will be open standards, virtual engineering, virtual simulation. It's productivity increase, being ready for condition monitoring and predictive maintenance. And of course, this contributes towards sustainability as well. Yes, and talking about sustainability, how does Connected hydraulics contribute to green what? 
Well, just think about a huge number of 75% reduction. So we can reduce 75% of energy through our speed variable drive Cytronics. We can reduce 75% of oil tank volume of a power unit through our micro technology. We can reduce 75% of a footprint of a power unit, means square meters, through our Cytro box. And with Cytro box as well, we can reduce 75% of noise and achieve 75 decibel of a running power unit. Sounds great. And you're already the market leader of industrial hydraulics. So where can you possibly go from there? What lies beyond? When we look beyond, I would say all products are Industry 4.0 already. They have an electrical interface and all products and systems would be connected. Our customers can find all digital product data on all relevant customer touch points. And our customers can select, engineer, simulate and order their individual systems online in the system. We would have self-commissioning systems, means plug and play modules, and all our customers would need is an electrical interface. For sure, we would provide maximum productivity to our customers and achieve zero downtime through condition monitoring and predictive maintenance. So I can't wait what the future will bring. So let's have a glimpse into the near future, the next one and a half hours. What is your personal highlights? Well, um, we introduced Cytro Box as the most innovative power unit into the market two years ago. Today, consequently, we introduce an actuator. So we introduce Cytro Force, a standard servo hydraulic actuator to our customers today. But Till will tell you more about that and about our connected hydraulics portfolio later. So thank you very much for talking with us about the vision of what lies beyond. And ladies and gentlemen, now it's time to talk about uh, what lies now and next. And we are talking about this together with the Director of Product Management for Industrial Hydraulics at Rexroth, Till Deube. So Till, good to have you here. Well, thanks for having me. And we already uh, spoke with uh, Martin about the trends mm -hmm. and drivers that thrive the industry. One major topic has been sustainability. So mm -hmm. how do you and your colleagues support these requirements? Well, Maxi, um, talking with customers over the last years, um, of course, they all have their individual needs or individual requirements, but there are two topics which come up again and again. And the first one is they value the hydraulic for their unsurpassed qualities like high forces, high power density, a very robust technology. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, second thing is, um, and that's not only a requirement for hydraulics, but for all the components they are using, we are looking for components which make it easier for them to do their design, um, which makes it easier for them to do their startups, um, help them to become faster to the market, and um, have a better serviceability of a product. And that's the reason why we came up with a vision, with the concept of connected hydraulics, um, which basically consists out of three main dimensions. OK, so tell us about these dimensions. What is the first one? Well, the first dimension is, and Martin Vogelsanger mentioned that as well, with connected hydraulics, we are connecting hydraulics, classical hydraulics on one side with its advantages, with electronics, digital technology, software on the other side, bringing together the best out of both worlds. Mm -hmm. The second one? Um, well, the second one is that connected hydraulics for us means that we build our components in a way that they connect with each other, that they interact easily uh, in a machine application, and that they only not only connect with each other, but they connect to the machine of our customers as well. Mm -hmm. And the third dimension of connected hydraulics? Well, the third dimension um, is, is, is a concept I personally like, uh, like pretty much because um, with the third dimension, we are focusing not only at 
optimizing our products during operation, but we are looking at all the touch points where our customers have contact with our products. Mm -hmm. And um, so starting with optimizing the, the design, um, helping our customers to, to make an easy design, simplify your design. Um, next touch point after we have done the design, streamline your installation. How, do we, how can our components easily be integrated, easily be used during commissioning? And then, of course, the most important touch point, maximize the productivity. How do our products behave in operation? And that's the most important touch point because if they don't do well in operation, you don't need an easy startup. So that's the one we are still focusing most on. And then, of course, um, in case you need service, uh, touch point, minimize your downtime. So building products in a way that they are easy to service, that it's easy to get help with them. So to sum up, the relevant touch points that your customers have with hydraulics are engineering, then, uh, of course, commissioning, operation and service. That's correct. Okay. But what is most important for them? What do you think? Well, shall we ask them? Well, always good. Okay. So here is our first voting. What is most important for you? Is it A, sustainability, B, profitability, or C, time to market. I'm already excited what your answer will be. And while voting, I would like to ask you, what are you are most excited of today? Well, I'm most excited that today we'll have a world premiere of our new, fully integrated, self-contained servo hydraulic axis, the Citro Force. And uh, that's, that's going to be my personal highlight of the show today. Mm -hmm. But wait, I know that this is part of a huge demonstrator. I mean, come on, it weighs about three tons. It's almost as big as a car. So how will you possibly get it here in our virtual studio? Well, luckily, the, the whole demonstrator is, is that big, but the Citroforce it's, itself is, is more compact. But in order to bring the complete demonstrator where we are showing the different connected hydraulic products on into our studio, we are using the marvels of modern technology <laughs> and bringing it in virtually. Oh, here we go. Wow, you really made it. So great job. Yeah. You brought the demonstrator in our virtual studio. Yeah, and you see the different mm -hmm. products here, like Citronics uh, we will talk about, and Citropack hydraulic power unit, uh, a Heglund's motor, and of course behind me what still with a little camouflage on our mm -hmm. Citroforce. But we are going to lift the curtain later. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a look at the results of the first voting. Are you most interested in sustainability? B, profitability, or C, time to market. Hmm. And the scale is still growing. And the major part goes with profitability. Mm -hmm. What oh. do you think? More than the half. 55%. Well, that's, that's pretty clear, but you know... It's 56%, yes. 56% for profitability. But I'm actually not surprised because at the end of the day, our customers are running a business. Yes. And in order to exactly. stay in business, you have to be profitable at the end of the day. So that's absolutely clear. Um, but the nice thing with connected hydraulics is that you actually do not have to choose if you are profitable or sustainable, but connected hydraulics is actually supporting the sustainability. It supports the profitability by speeding up things, making things easier, um, and it supports the time to market aspect. Mm -hmm. To make a long story short, this is the revolutionary excellence of Bosch Rexroth. So let us return to the touch points. Can you get a bit more concrete with this? Yeah, let's start with the first touch point. We are basically doing this show following the, the touch points, starting now with simplifying the design. And um, one example, what we are doing in order to help our customers to simplify their design, to make it easier for them to choose the right products, is that we have configurators for our major product groups. Oh, cool. So do you have an example for the configurator? So let's say I want to integrate a speed variable drive system into my production chain. Yeah, let's, let's take the, Cytro, uh, sorry, the Cytronics as an example here. And I'm going to share my screen here. Mm -hmm. But OK, just in one sentence. The Cytronics, what is it? Oh, sorry for that. Yeah, the Cytronics is a speed variable pump system 
So it's a system which consists out of a motor pump group and you can vary the speed of electrical motor. Mm -hmm. And by that you can output only the amount of oil flow and oil pressure you need actually. Okay, so where do I find the configurator? Well, um, you should be able to see my screen right now here. And You're on the website or where are you? I'm on the yeah I'm I'm on the web page of of Bosch Rexroth so mm -hmm. if R and T it comes perfectly uh, so when you want to use one of our configurators you just start on our homepage boschrexroth.com mm -hmm. uh, and now you scroll down you see the different products groups we are offering and we of course want to see something about industrial hydraulics and within oh here you already see our side force. There shouldn't be the curtain off yet. <laughs> we don't lift the curtain yet. So um, <laughs> scroll down. <laughs> we talked about Citronics, the pump system. So mm -hmm. I'm choosing that. Mm -hmm. And here we go. Mm -hmm. Here you see the Citronics pump system. And here you find a link directly to the configurator. But wait, do I have to be an expert to use this? Well, the idea is that you do not have to be an expert. You, of course, have to have some basic knowledge about hydraulics, but we have actually two different modes for the configurator. We have mm -hmm. the manual configuration, uh, which allows you, if you're an expert, to really quickly choose the components you want to use in your Citronics. And we have the supported configuration where you get more question asked and uh, you get guided through the process. So, well, I'm not the expert yet. So can we use the guided one? Sure. Okay. So I'm choosing the guided one. Next thing I have to choose is which type of Citronic system do I want to use, asynchronous motor, servo motor, and I'm going to just use a frequency controlled pump drive. Um, can choose between different internal gear pumps and axial piston pumps. I'm choosing an internal gear pump here. And um, next I have to answer a few questions. I take the um, self-ventilated motor cooling. And this one, that's the selection screen where you can choose the right system. And there are two values which are most interested, interesting when you are choosing a Citronics. You know, the first one is how much flow do I want to use? How much oil flow do I need to get out of the system? And the second one, of course, um, how much pressure do I want to get? And that's determining the sizing. So I just look into this table here and let's say I want to use uh, I need 30 liters of oil flow when I look into this Q max um, column here and I see that there is one which says 33 liters, so that should be sufficient. And when I go over to the right and here I see different pressures, they said 300 bar, so I take in the fourth row here the last value, 315 bar, and it automatically chooses a system which fits to that requirement. And I can continue choosing the type of oil determines the type of uh, seals we have there, how it's mounted, uh, if we need machine safety, I'm going over it quicker, which type of connectivity do I want to use, and I'm choosing the multi-Ethernet connection, like something like Profinet, for example. If I want additional IOs here, um, something like the brake resistors, I can change the pressure transducer, and then the last thing is something which we have added new to the configurator. We can actually select certain drive parameters, uh, which then will be written into a configuration file, which you then can use during startup to speed up the startup of the system. Okay. And you can choose something like, do you want to have an oil temperature monitoring and an oil filter monitoring? And all of that is put into that configuration file, and you do not have to program that manually mm -hmm. during startup later. Mm -hmm. Um, you're finished. So it sounds quite easy, but what do you get out from this? Well, one thing you get out of it, you can directly um, go to our basket mm -hmm. and to our e-shop here. Mm -hmm. um, if your purchasing department doesn't want you to purchase yourself, you can also get a component list here, uh, which you can download and then forward to your purchasing department. Um, and another thing we have integrated are files and models which you then can use downstream in your engineering. Mm -hmm. Like for example, an e-plan oh, model. Okay. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, let's see. We should have a graphic for that. Yeah. Um, the e-plan model, where you can directly integrate that in your overall e-plan model of your electric cabinet. And another thing we have is the CAD, the three-dimensional model, um, which allows you to integrate the component 
directly into your mm -hmm. three-dimensional model of your overall uh -huh. machine, thus checking if there are any collisions, mm -hmm. if it fits properly, and um, that, of course, speeds up your design process considerably. Mm -hmm. So it really sounds like it helps to find an individual solution, but does the configurator also pay off in terms of sustainability? Well, it does, because it helps you to find the right-sized component. And if you have a right-sized component, then of course you have a chance to run the component as efficient as technically possible. Mm -hmm. So talking about simplifying your design, then we talk about engineering and there is this really unusual term, digital twin. <laughs> what is that? Well, the digital twin, um, where quite a few things mm -hmm. summed up under this term digital twin. One thing is that we are offering uh, the simulation models I showed earlier, like the CAT mm -hmm. model. Uh, another thing is that we also can use simulation models mm -hmm. to simulate the behavior of the machine. And here uh -huh. you see the example of our demonstrator, which we actually simulated uh, before we, we were building it. Mm -hmm. But, well, honestly, why do I need a virtual representation of a machine that I might already have in my company? <laughs> well, the, the idea is that you can do the simulation and basically all the testing before you actually build something. And if you then find out that something doesn't fit together, that the dynamics don't work, don't add up or things like that, it's much easier to change a component to do adjustment in the virtual world than when you already have a component sitting in front of mm -hmm. you and you have to reorder parts, which is costly and time consuming. Ah, okay, time consuming. So time pressure is also a major topic? Uh, it is, it is. And that's one of the reasons why we used that technology for the virtual demonstrator, because that was built, as I mentioned before, for mm -hmm. a trade show. And uh, all of you who have done something for a trade <laughs> show know that it's always tight on time at the end. And that helped us to, to actually simulate the behavior of this complex kinematic, uh, of the dynamics of the simulator, of this uh, demonstrator, and um, get it right the first time when we had a real part sitting there. Do you use uh, the digital twin only for the design phase? Well, today that's a focus point of a digital twin, but we are already thinking about extending the digital twin um, by building a digital twin not only for the product, but for each instance of a product. Mm -hmm. And for example, that digital twin then could store something like end-of-line test data. And that would allow you later on during operation to compare the current behavior of a product with the behavior while it was tested when it went out of our factory, so you can see if there are any changes. Or you could use the simulation, the behavior simulation models to compare the real behavior of a machine with the simulated behavior. And if there's a difference at a certain component between the simulated behavior and the real behavior, that's the first clue that something might be wrong there. Okay, so got it. Thank you very much for giving us that insights. I have a deeper understanding now about the strength of your projects and the digital twin. So, ladies and gentlemen, there are already many questions coming in. So let's start our first Q&A. First question is about the configurator, Till. Mm -hmm. How do I find the right choice of product for my individual needs? Well, using our configurators, um, but before you can use them, you actually have to, to, to get to them. How do you get to them? Um, as I showed, um, one possibility is go to the product side on our homepage. Um, that's probably the easiest way, but you also can scroll down on the homepage and there is a section where you get a list of all the configurators we have available. Mm -hmm. And um, so once you are at the right configurator, then you can use that configurator to choose from the wide variety of products we have. And we are in hydraulic full line, so we have thousands of variants of our products. But the configurators then help you when you enter the, the properties you need to find the right product. There is another question coming in regarding the configurator. Are any other configurators available? We have configurators for all the major product groups. We, we are offering. So we have them, we saw the Cytronics configurator, we have them for our valves, for our pumps, of course for the cylinders, quite a few variants there as well as, uh, and we have them for our hydraulic power units. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, good news. And uh, a question regarding the digital twin. How do I get cat models for your products? Uh, the cat models are connected with the configurators. So once you have choose a component using the configurator, you always get the option to download the CAD model for that part. And we are offering the CAD models in um, certain standard formats, uh, STEP, for example, IGES, uh, but we are also offering them in the proprietary CAD formats of the major vendors. So till we could go on for hours. So many questions coming in. Thank you very much for your interest in that topic. But unfortunately, we have to uh, go on with the show. So in case a question hasn't been answered yet, please go to the experts chat that we activate right away after this live session and discuss your issue directly with one of our product experts. So. Till, we talked a lot about time pressure right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good buzzword uh, mm -hmm. for streamline your installation. Can you give us an example directly on the demonstrator? Yeah, we are now at the second touch point, streamlining your installation. What are we doing to help you to get a quick and easy installation of our products? And the example I would like to use here, you already see the Citro pack. It's a small self-contained power unit. Um, and the example I want to use is the larger brother of that, the Citro box. And we have an, um, an, an, an configuration wizard which helps you and which guides you through the installation process of that Citro box. Okay, how fast is it? How long does it take? I mean, 50 minutes, half an hour? Well, it's, it's pretty fast. <laughs> how well, fast? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, 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 the final configuration you can do in three to four minutes, maybe. Oh, come on. Three up to four minutes. Yeah. That sounds yeah, too fast. fast to be true. Yeah. Well, I think you have to prove that. Well, for that, I need the help of a good friend of mine, Andreas Günder. He is actually working on the design of that product, and uh, we should bring him in. Okay, let's call him. But I definitely want a countdown for the bats that oh, we have well, running right now. It, yeah. <laughs> so, Andreas, are you there? Hello, how are you? So, Till just made a promise that you have to fulfill now. You can get a new machine running in no more than three minutes. Impossible. Yeah, yeah. hi Till, hi Maxi, thanks, I'm fine. Yeah, that's true, it's very simple to commission a Citro box. Fortunately, we already have a Citro box here in the right software. So do you want me to show it to you right now? Yes, definitely. I'm already curious. So you can do it in below three minutes. Mm, sorry for that. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds tough, but I will try. Luckily, the Citro box here is already set it up and is connected hydraulically and electrically. So we can focus on the most time consuming steps now. Please just give me a signal when you want me to start. Well, yes, we start directly, but before, I think we should ask the audience <laughs> what they think. So You're here is our next voting. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? Is Andreas able to install the Citro box in less than A, 2 minutes 30, B, 3 minutes, or C, 4 minutes? <laughs> Till, do you have a guess? Well, I don't want to influence the audience. No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> but but uh, Andy, he is great. He is, he's pretty fast. He's pretty fast. Well, so then let's give it a go. And while voting, let's hand back to Andreas. Andreas, please start now. Yeah, so let's start. The first thing we need to do is to connect our computer with the Citro box with this cable. Yeah. Good start. <laughs> now just wait a couple of seconds and then click on the connect button. Now you see connection successful. The first very, usually very time consuming step is to bleed the whole drive unit. Therefore, we implemented some functionalities in our wizard that allows you to very smoothly turn the drive and push the air bubbles out of the pressure line into your reservoir. So here you can see the timer, it's going down from 30 seconds. So this we need to wait, of course, and then the power unit is bleeded successfully. So. He's still relaxed. Well, <laughs> he, he can do it. <laughs> two, one, finished. 
So next very important step is to adjust the pressure relief valve. For this, we also implemented some calculation. This makes it very easy for you. So you just need to type in your needed system pressure, for example, 70 bar, and it already implements you the set pressure for your pressure relief valve, which is 90 bar. So you just need to click on start drive now. Your unit is turning and you use a normal Allen wrench to turn in the set screw and in parallel watch your monitor. So here you can see the very big number of the current pressure. And wait until you have the 90 bar. You have hydraulics in the background here. Mm -hmm. You can also see this the green light and then just lock it with a wrench. One minute to go. No but, pressure. Yeah. And also this process <laughs> is done yeah. very fast. <laughs> so the next one is to set up your configuration to the overall machine control via, um, for example, Profinet. Here you can see a very easy dashboard that allows you to monitor the traffic and easily implement it in the overall control. After this step, uh, you can modify the parameters of your additional functions like the cooling, degassing, dewatering, and in the next page also of the thresholds of your warning and errors. Of course, everything is configured to the standard, but it allows you to make some modifications. And that's it. Cyberbox finally commissioned. And the tool also gives you the possibility to create a PDF report and document the whole commissioning process and parametrization. So, back to you, Till and Maxi. How long did it take? Two minutes 40. It's unbelievable. So you won. <laughs> Thanks. You <laughs> saved me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much and goodbye. Enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs> take care. <laughs> My pleasure. That was fun. Goodbye, Maxi and Till. Well, but anyway, it was close. <laughs> but he made it. <laughs> he made it. So let's have a look at the results of the voting. Two minutes 30 was answer B. Three minutes answer B. Or did you think that it would have taken longer than three minutes? So most of them are for answer B. Three minutes. Well, what thanks do you think? for your vote of confidence. Yeah, here. thank you. Thank you for your trust. <laughs> <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, that was quite exhausting i think at least for him <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh, let's have a break right now and let's have another q a so many questions about the cider box okay uh what support can the wizard provide me for the hardware installation mechanical hydraulic and electrical uh, okay okay well yeah what we saw here to be honest was the last electronic configuration step, but of course, before that, you have to do all the hydraulic connections, you have to do the electrical connections, but this wizard actually guides you step by step through all of that, putting on the connection, filling in the oil, and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for the answer. Is it also possible to configure a more detailed and deeper parameterization? Yes, it is. Um, the installation wizard you just saw gives you the basic setting which fits, I would say, 90% of the cases. But if you want to tweak the last bit of performance out of the unit, if you want to adjust it exactly to your application, then you always have a possibility to use our Intraworks DS tool. And with that, you can do the fine tuning. You can access all the parameters individually and tweak the, the <laughs> thing to, to fit your needs. OK, perfect. So what question next? I think I take this one. Also regarding the Sutra box, does the tool also offer support in case of service? Yeah, the tool allows you to, for example, access the error logs, and that helps you when you're communicating with service to um, pinpoint quicker mm -hmm. um, areas where you might have an issue. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for giving the audience the chance to place the questions. And uh, well, if your question hasn't been answered, as I already mentioned, go to the expert chat and discuss the issue directly with one of our product experts and we activate the chats right away after this live session.
So ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we are back to maximize your productivity. Well, let's see what else the demonstrator has to offer. Till, sorry, I might... Are you listening? We're having a live show running. So what are you doing? Playing so, 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 Sudoku? So, so, so. Snake? No, Tetris? No, 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 no. Come so, on. No, 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 no. Sorry for that. I, I just connected my phone to uh, this new um, pressure-reducing valve for fully digital onboard electronics. Oh, well, it, it was you. Yes, I noticed that the, light, the, the green light switched to blue. Yeah, that's actually the sign that the Bluetooth connection is established. Well, we are talking of a Bluetooth connection here. So it works like my smartphone, what I connected to, I don't know, my loudspeaker or my headphones. Oh, pretty much, pretty much the same. All you need is uh, a smart device, uh, iOS or Android operating system, mm -hmm. uh, one of our new valves with a Bluetooth connectivity device on and uh, download the app and you can start right away connecting to the valve. So. Honestly, I don't need uh, a multimeter or a wrench, only the Bluetooth connection and my smartphone. You know, I, I like this picture of a multimeter and a wrench because uh, that's what we, what, we, what we had to use in the past to do adjustment for wrench, to, to check if everything is right for multimeter. And uh, well, with this app, you basically can do all that using just your phone. You can do adjustments, you can check the condition and um, basically operate the valve. So, well, then tell us, how do, do you use it in your daily progress? Um, yeah, um, let me share my, my screen here. Ah, we already have it, perfect. Um, <clears throat> now, what you see here is the newest generation of our pressure reducing valves. And it's a good example for connected hydraulics because on the one hand, we improve the hydraulic properties, higher flow, more dynamics. And the, on the other hand, we added this fully digital onboard electronics. And that's what I would like to focus on, what we can do with that. And um, as soon as I've established the connection, I can see the valve here in the app. And on the start screen, I already get some important information, like, for example, valve fully functional. If there would be any error message, we could actually see that here um, on this start screen. And it gives you some um, basic condition values, like, for example, the pressure of a valve season hold. Well, since it's sitting on a table, so the pressure is zero. Um, <laughs> but the next thing you can do is when you click on the login and when you have to enter a password here, and um, this, this allows you to access the level where you can actually do adjustments. And we have a password so that not any unauthorized person can, can fuddle around Me, with, your, with, with your valve. But <laughs> yeah, um, of course, if you, if you buy that valve, you can do that. And mm -hmm. one thing I just would show one of the functionalities here is when I go to the controller settings mm -hmm. and I activate, for example, the pressure control. I said it's a pressure reducing valve with a closed loop pressure control. Um, I have a possibility to change the behavior of a controller. Um, more moderate, stable on the uh -huh. one hand side, and more aggressive dynamic on the other hand side. And that's, that allows you to actually get the best dynamics out of your specific mm -hmm. application. Uh, because not all applications can use the same settings for the, for the uh, controller, but if your application allows that, you can try it out and you can go to a more aggressive mm -hmm. setting and um, get some more dynamics, some more productivity out of your valve. Sounds really great. Quite impressive. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, we have even more for you in store. Let's talk about maximize your productivity. But before this, let's uh, give us the chance to remove this table. So, yes, let's get back to the Citronix, the variable speed pump drive. Does it pay off also in terms of energy efficiency? Um, yeah, well, maximum your, maximize your productivity. You have basically two ways. You can optimize the performance of the machine. That helps you to maximize productivity. But the second big lever is to use components which are more energy efficient. And that's what the Citronix stand for, our speed variable 
pump drive. Okay, but I'm really interested how much greenhouse gas emissions can be really avoided with uh, the Cytronics, and I would love mm. to ask the audience. So here is uh, our next voting. Ladies and gentlemen, by what percentage can variable speed pump drives lower CO2 emissions? Is it A, up to 20%, B, up to 40%, or C, up to 80%? And while you are voting and we are waiting, I would love to know, <laughs> generally spoken. Why can a Citronics lower CO2 emissions and what is the m major difference to a usual hydraulic system? Well, in order to explain that, I have to dig a little bit more into the basics of hydraulics, well, the traditional hydraulic system, and I think we have prepared a graphic for that, mm -hmm. um, consists out of three main elements. And all of you are well aware of that. There is the, the motor pump group, which generates the hydraulic flow and pressure. There's on the other side the cylinder uh, that actually is doing the movement. That's what you need actually the hydraulic system for, moving something. And uh, between that, you have the controls, the valve technology, a proportional valve to control that movement. So how do you not drive the system? You start the pump and um, you run the electrical motor at a constant speed, and you create a constant pressure with that. Uh, the pump usually has a regulator which de-strokes the pump um, when, you, when you don't need any flow, so, but you still stay at a constant pressure. And now if you want to move the cylinder, you start shifting the proportional valve, and by opening the proportional valve a little bit more, a little bit less, you actually are controlling the speed and the force with which the, the cylinder is moving. And um, so it's a great technology. It gives you great controllability of the movement. The little downside to it is that at this proportional valve, you have throttle losses. And this throttle losses, they also generate heat. Uh, that can be quite a bit of energy, which you are wasting at this mm -hmm. point. So that's the reason why today, uh, in certain applications, we are recommending to use the Citronic system instead. And uh, what's the difference between the Citronic system and the conventional hydraulic system? Uh, the difference, main difference is that we have a speed variable electrical motor now, and that allows us to turn the pump at a variable speed. So that means now if we want to move the cylinder, we shift the valve and we start the motor, and now we do not go to a constant pressure, but we actually are controlling the flow of oil. Mm -hmm. Thus, we are turning the pump only as quick as it is needed to get exactly the speed of movement of the cylinder which we need. Mm -hmm. And the big advantage of that is we only need a switching valve here uh, that is fully open and it's just used to change the direction of the cylinder and we don't have any great throttling losses at that and the advantage is that we are now only putting in the energy into the system by turning the pump just as much as it is needed uh, which is needed to move the cylinder and we do not have the throttling losses any longer okay. so that saves a considerable amount of energy so the Citronics really has a high potential let's have a look at the results of the voting is it 20 40 or is it 80 percent here we go Hmm. Most of them think it's 80%. Oh, that's absolutely correct. Um, depending on the system you're comparing it to, you really can get up to 80%. And when I say comparing to the system um, uh, or depending on the application you have, then, um, for example, if you have an application where you have always full speed movements all the time, then the saving is lower. Mm -hmm. But if you have an application where you have slower movements and where you have long holding periods, then that's where you get the biggest savings and that can go up to 80%. Okay, so I understand that the Citronics saves money, mm -hmm. it's sustainable. Are there other advantages as well? Uh, yeah, there are some nice side effects um, to, to the speed variable drive. Um, one is since you do not put in the energy into the system, uh, you do not get the heat into the system. That means that you can in some certain cases, um, get rid of a cooler altogether. In other cases, you just need a smaller one, and that saves, of course, energy um, because you need a lower cooling capacity, and it saves money if you don't need the cooler. Uh, the second 
advantage is that uh, since the pump is not turning at full speed all the time, the noise level goes draw down considerably. And um, you also can usually use um, lower oil reservoir capacities. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it sounds already like a maximum of productivity. Uh, perhaps we can talk about other things here in the demonstrator as well. Um, wait, for example... Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a red thing. What is it? Well, that's a Haglund's motor. Uh, great, great part, a great component from our company. But uh, for to, to tell you all about that, a colleague of mine, I think, is... Can, can give you all the insights on that. Okay, perfect. Good idea. So we see each other again later on here on stage for the moment. Thank you very much. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about that red thing with Hagelund's expert, Steffen Kluber. So hello, good to have you here. Yeah, it's a pleasure for me, Maxi. Thanks. So, yeah, let's directly talk about uh, the red thing that I already mentioned. What is it all about? Yeah. It's red, it's round, it's compact and it's powerful. That's typical what it describes Hecklund. And um, our motors, yeah, they are found in such a lot of uh, cases, especially, let's say, in environments with tough conditions where durability and especially also high performance is needed. But coming back to this small motor, this motor, what you just have seen here, is the smallest one in our complete portfolio. And uh, later on, you will see, let's say, the complete picture from large to small. But let me briefly, let's say, give you one indication. Think about our biggest motor can achieve 2 million Newton meters torque. Quite a lot. <laughs> yes, for sure. So is there a typical Hagelin's customer? Yeah, let's say you will find our application in all sorts of conditions all around the world, especially when we speak about uh, conditions like placing heat to freezing cold. And typically you will find it in areas like industrial, mobile or marine applications. And whenever uh, we have to talk about reliability, then it's often in case where you uh, yeah, switch to our Hecklon system. Mm -hmm. And reliability is also a question of productivity. So uh, perhaps it's a silly question, I don't know, but can we get more concrete on the term of productivity? For sure, because productivity is especially what the customer, so what you gain. And um, it can be described in different ways, like in faster throughput or higher output. And yeah, I think the easiest way is let us see an interview with one of our uh, customers in Brazil, which is a company, Ferrari. Yes, good idea. So let's have a look. Os investimentos dos equipamentos Bosch e Rexroth nos trouxeram de imediato o aumento da moagem, é, aumento na extração do caldo e também o um aproveitamento maior de tempo de processamento da moenda e, consequentemente, de todo o processo industrial. So this is a success story. Are there other customers like this all over the world? Yeah, to be honest, let's say for me, it's really a pleasure to, to get, let's say, a lot of this positive feedback from customers all around the world. And to be honest, yeah, uh, there is really also a place which is clearly connected to all these success stories. Oh, where is it? Yeah, that's in Melanzell, yeah, in the northern part of Sweden. And you see here, let's say, the high coast and we fly in. It's beautiful there. And it's <laughs> so important for us because, as you can see here, our plant and our uh, headquarter is located there. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I would say, yeah, let us, let's say, discuss the issues with one of our experts there. Really good idea, so let's hand over to the home of Haglunds. Hey, this is Snellansell in northern Sweden calling. This is the motor you just saw on the demonstrator in the studio. My name is Jeanette Kote and I'm a proud member of the Haglunds research and development team. And this is the full range from our smallest to the biggest hydraulic motor we can offer to you. But as you mentioned, there's so much more to a Haglund solution than just the motors. 
we're amending these with the whole portfolio of accessories ranging from valves over torque arm, mechanical couplings, of course our drive units and our automation functions that turn it into a drive system for your specific application. And last but not least there is our services that turn it into a solution just for your needs. How are we doing that? This here is Melancel, the home of Heglons. This is where the magic happens. So we are applying state-of-the-art methods such as simulation, of course, but we also rely on our infrastructure, such as our hydraulic lab, to validate the functionality of our products by full-scale testing. So to put it in a nutshell, Behind every Heglons colleague you meet, you can expect a global team of experts striving to find the best solution for your specific application. Isn't it? Yes, it is. So tell me, what is the customer benefit out of this? Yeah, Maxi, for me, uh, to clearly point it out, there are two major issues. Yeah? On one hand side, we have our worldwide sales and service team, which can provide our customers in local language, and we are close closely located to our customers. On the other hand side, we have a deep application know-how where we can support you. And in addition, our R&D team, what you just saw and what Jeanette mentioned already, together with our service expert, can give you additional support whenever needed. So reliability and performance is a good description for Haglund's, right? It is, and it's not the only one. And uh, yeah, to maybe come to the point and make more topics on this idea, I think it's good to hand over once again to our colleagues in Yes, Melanset. let's have a look to this place where the magic happens. <laughs> yeah, that's a very typical discussion we have when choosing the right Heglund solution just for you. What we always start with is understanding the specifics of your application. So what is your demand when it comes to speed and torque? putting you in the driver's seat to maximize your productivity. A second aspect to consider where our quality really makes the difference is the demands on reliability. So where do you want to take the extra step when it comes to robustness, choosing a direct hydraulic solution? Another dimension, and that is really interesting to discuss as well, is the footprint of your solution. And there it's, from my perspective, three aspects to consider when it comes to maximizing the efficiency of your choice. The first thing is, of course, that around here in Melancel, we are really putting effort into having lean value streams and that minimizes the footprint of our products from the very beginning. The second aspect is that since our drives last so long, that not only is beneficial for you when we talk about the total cost of ownership, but also it gives you another level at hand to minimize the footprint of our solution. Yeah, and last but not least, by dimensioning your Heglon solution correctly and also choosing a smart operating points, you have further levers at hand to minimize the footprint of your overall installation. So we are here to discuss that together with you. And I guess it might be reasonable to have a look onto a concrete example. Really good idea. So do you have an example for us? For sure, Maxi, I have an <coughs> example. But to, before we come to the example, um, let me briefly elaborate what we have just heard. So Hecklons is, let's say, well known for their long lifetime solutions. In addition, let's say we have oh, we, our solutions only need a low kind of maintenance. And you can imagine with a little bit of service, yeah, and we have service technicians all around the world, they would even last longer. So we are talking of a small footprints. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's not only our motors which has a small footprint. It's in addition our complete system. And the complete system, that gives our customer the increase in productivity and sustainability. Mm -hmm. Therefore, now I would come to this uh, example, what we mentioned, to our customer Genan in Germany. And Genan is the world's largest company for tire recycling. And that's what we like to discuss right now. Okay. Yeah, of course. But uh, yeah, it's a good buzzword, I think, for our next voting. So we would like to ask you, 
How much CO2 reduction does Genan achieve per ton of tires by recycling instead of incinerating them? Well, is it A, 0.1 tons, B, 0.5 tons, or is it C, 1.1 tons, which would be quite groundbreaking. Well, quite amazing. So, generally spoken, how does Genan impact the environment? Yeah, you mentioned it already, and we could add a second topic. So on one hand side, by incinerating uh, or not incinerating the tires, uh, they can avoid a lot of CO2, which would go in this atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And on the second side, due to the process of Genan, they are able to separate the single elements in fiber, rubber and plastics, which could be reused then mm -hmm. afterwards. Okay, so I would go for B or C, I'm not quite sure yet. Tell us, why did they decide for Haglunds? Yeah, for um, Genan it was more or less, they start already at the beginning with our uh, system solutions and the reason was that they need a trustful um, and a reliable solution and that was the reason why they mm -hmm. decide for Haglunds. Mm -hmm. So ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. Let's have a look at your results. How much CO2 reduction does Genan achieve per ton of tires by recycling instead of incinerating them? Well, it's growing and growing, still growing. Mm -hmm. Most of them, I think, are going with answer C, 48%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> if this was really the right answer, hmm. I think we should uh, let uh, the right answer hear directly from Guinness itself. For each ton of end-of-life tires recycled instead of being incinerated, the climber will be relieved of 1.1 ton of CO2 emissions at minimum. For us, the main advantages of the Hagland's drive are the compact and robust design and the high torque right from the beginning. Hagland's system ensure our productivity. So this is definitely quite impressive, right? Mm -hmm. Maxi, it is and I think it, uh, it clearly points out why I'm so proud, let's say, to represent here, let's say, the part of Hagland's and such kind of solution which helps all our customers to get a reliability and sustainability for their solutions. Yes, so thank you very much for uh, this clear statement. And I think we are talking about a win-win scenario here. Satil, good to have you here on stage. Well, great to be back. The magic happened. You're back again. Well, <laughs> speaking of magic, I just want to make clear the magic is happening at our colleagues in Melan Cell, but not only there, but also here in Lohr at our headquarters for Industrial Hydraulic. Exactly, in this virtual studio, yes. So, well, it's amazing to these, uh, see these big machines, right? They're great mm -hmm. applications. Yes, and it's really good to know that you put a lot of effort into making them even more efficient and sustainable. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our last touch points minimize your downtime and yes of course time is money so how fast do you help your customers well um exactly at the touch point minimize your downtime we thought about ways how we can help our customers if in case that something goes wrong how we can help them to get help quickly and if something if your machine is down time is of the essence so one thing we came up with is a service app which helps you to get quick help for the components we are offering. Mm -hmm. So you're offering a service app. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about the features? Well, it allows you to actually scan uh, which component you have. But, but, but you know what? Before I try now to explain all of that, I would say we asked a colleague of mine from our service department. Good idea. So you have a dedicated group working on this. And I would like to hand over now to Volker Tenev to explain it. Hi, Maxi, and hi, Till. Unfortunately, I cannot be in the show today. But instead, I prepared you this short video in order to explain you our app, the Digital Service Assistant. 
Let's imagine we are all technicians in a steel plant and our job is to keep the hydraulic systems running. In order to minimize the downtime, we have to analyze the cause of a problem and solve it as fast as possible. And in order to get support from a third party, uh, we need to identify the product itself 100%. Let's have a look on our app, um, how it can help us with that. So I'm looking now at the home screen and here we see the main functions of the app. And it supports us in getting information about the spare parts or the repair of the product. It will get me into touch with the specialist who can support me. And it's also an easy way to download the documentation. And let's try that for this valve. It's a valve out of a current series with a type plate which consists a, a QR code. So if I go back into my app, I click on documentation, I want to add a component, and now I want to scan the QR code. So now I look at the um, type plate. Now it recognized the QR code and this is the right valve. I apply the selection and now I can download the um, data sheet. And the data sheet will be saved locally on my mobile device, so I have it always in my pocket with me. But all technicians know that yeah, you don't have only new products in your machine, or you have also older machines, and we also have products without the QR code. So how can we do it there? Um, so I go back to my app, um, and I select and add a new component, and I use the scan type plate function. So now I'm again in the photo mode. I look at this type plate, which is without QR code. I take a picture. And now I can check if it transferred the information correctly into the app from the picture. So yes, material number right, type description right. So I can take it over and then I can once more download my documentation and I have it as before, I have it on my smartphone. So overall, I hope you got a good first impression of our app and I hand back over to you, Till. So, well, the app is definitely a good way to get fast help and to order fast. Are there other ways to get in touch with you? Um, yeah, yeah, of course. We have, um, we are present in over 80 countries worldwide of sales offices and service locations. And uh, if you need somebody, there you are, when you can, you can get in touch with, with our colleagues and they can actually send a service technician right to your place. So mm -hmm. that's always a possibility as well. But the great thing with the app is that you have it anywhere, anytime, 24-7. Yes, I like the idea. But on the other hand, of course, it would be even better if I could get some heads up before actually something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. big topic. Uh, uh, we have a lot of requests for that. And so we, are, um, we have some solutions here as well. Um, we call that the Citro Connect system, and it's a cloud-based condition monitoring system, and uh, uh, we are using that to give you the opportunity to monitor the condition of our components, basically any there in the world, by just using a browser. Mm -hmm. What can the operator do with it? Well, um, one thing is that you can see the current state of, of the unit. Um, uh, mm -hmm. For example, if you have a hydraulic power unit, you can um, you can see the, the what's the pressure at the moment, mm -hmm. what's the temperature um, of yeah. of the unit, and um, so a lot of support. A lot of support, and and there are additional steps you you can get. And uh, the next step up is that uh, you have some kind of looking into the future by by looking at into trend lines, the history, and you see if something kind of gradually creeps out out of the right area. And then, of course, the highest step at the end is really looking into, into the future using big data analysis uh, and doing a predictive maintenance and giving you a real heads up if your component is going to have a problem in the future. So it's a helpful feature. Where do I find it? Um, 
Well, you 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 find it by by just ordering that option when when you order one of our mm -hmm. components. And I think we also have an example. We had the Citro box here, mm -hmm. and um, ah, we have it here virtually again on stage. Yes, of course. And um, that's one of the product which mm -hmm. you can actually order with the Citro Connect system. And what we have here in the graphic is uh, just an example on, on what on the values we can see. As I mentioned, something like the current pressure, mm -hmm. uh, what's the energy consumption at the moment, and also a health mm -hmm. index on the upper left-hand corner, giving you an idea if everything is still in perfect condition or if it's kind of degrading and you should start acting and, for example, doing a service. Mm -hmm. Let's make the deep dive. What about predictive maintenance? Well, with predictive maintenance, as I mentioned, um, that's kind of a the highest level you can get by um, using certain analytics, certain um, big data um, computations, you actually can look into the future to a certain extent. And that helps you, of course, mm -hmm. to minimize unplanned downtimes to um, schedule a maintenance um, before anything breaks down unexpectedly. So, well, it's definitely a new form of hydraulics. Mm -hmm. This is what I learned so far. It's energy efficient. It's quite, of course, space saving and it's intelligent. I can't wait what the future will bring. And uh, so I have to ask you, how long do I have to wait for it? Well, the, the Citro Connect system is here and available right away. If you order one of the Citro boxes, it actually comes with mm -hmm. it, uh, the base version where you can um, monitor the, the current values, and if you um, if you then um, want the next level, you can also get that. For example, getting the trend analysis. So I'm sure we are having a lot of questions right now. Shall we give uh, the customers and the audience uh, the chance to post the questions? Yeah, yeah. I think we ha didn't have a Q and A since quite a while here. Yes. So, so here's our quite a Q bit. and A. Okay, first question, take directly this one. Uh, which valves are equipped with this functionality? Mm. Ah, we are talking now about the fully digital onboard electronics you saw in, in, com yeah. in combination with a pressure reducing valve. I think so, yeah. And uh, that actually is, is the first valve we are offering with that fully digital onboard electronic. It's going to be coming to the market begin of next year. But uh, then we will start to equip over the next years all our proportional valves, which uh, have analog um, onboard electronics, with this fully functional onboard electronic. And that will give you the same possibilities, like using your digital wrench, your digital multimeter, adjusting the valve, um, having the digital interfaces like IO Link or field bus connectivity um, with all our proportional valves mm -hmm. uh, in the near future. Yes. I must say, uh, like pretty much the interaction with you right now here in this live show. So here's another question coming in regarding the Citronics. Mm -hmm. After how many years do the additional investment costs, converter, pressure sensor, payoff? Do you have a proper answer? Yeah, if you compare the costs of a conventional hydraulic system with a Citronic system, if you choose the Citronic system, the payoff period for the additional costs is roughly one to two years. Mm -hmm. Good news. The service app. Mm -hmm. In which countries is the app currently available? At the moment, the service app is only available in Europe, but we are working on um, extending the reach of the service app into the Americas as well in, as into Asia. Mm -hmm. And another question regarding the Citro Connect. I think this is a good one I would like to forward mm -hmm. to you. This sounds very difficult with connectivity and so many options. Is there special know-how required? With the Citro box? Mm -hmm. well, Citro uh, Connect. The, oh, the Citro Connect, I'm sorry. We have the Citro Connect. No, as I said, it's a cloud-based system. Mm -hmm. um, the algorithms uh, which do the condition monitoring are already on the machine or in our cloud system, and all you have to do is actually well, type in the right um, web address, um, type in your password, and then you can start monitoring the devices uh, which are connected with that cloud mm -hmm. service um, right away. And using that web browser is as easy as, well, viewing any other web page. Yes. So thank you very much for your answers. And if you have any questions left, go to the experts chat and discuss your issue directly with one of the product experts.
So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm already a bit excited <laughs> for telling the truth. We are pushing the limits today. I already learned so much about the components of the mm -hmm. demonstrator. We have been digging deep into the connected hydraulics, but now the time is ripe for mm -hmm. even more excitement. So, ladies and gentlemen, well. we coming to a part now we all have been waiting for, and you never talked about this before, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's an exciting moment for me as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's the moment we we mentioned uh, when we started. It's the world premiere of our brand new, fully integrated, self-contained server hydraulic access. Uh, our Citro Force. Yes, this is the next level of hydraulics. And ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. I'm honored to present the brand new innovation of Rexroth Connected Hydraulics. Here we go, Citroforce. <laughs> the brand new side of force. Here we go. We are not talking about a revolution. We are starting one. And now I would love to hear all that you know about the brand new side of force. Oh, certainly. You know, I, I'm in, in the area of hydraulics since quite a few years, but this product really kind of brings it all together. It's uh, everything you need on a hydraulic system. Frequency converter, pump, motor, cylinder, valves, manifolds, everything is just in one package. And that allows our customer to focus on what's most important for them to get the movement out of that thing. So let's talk again about the touch points. How does it contribute to a simplified design? Well, since it is one package, um, you do not have to design the complete hydraulic system, but when choosing the right Citroforce, which is a catalog product, you can actually just focus on what stroke do you need, what speed, what force do you need. Uh, we have a configurator which puts together the Citroforce, which exactly fits this, this requirements, and you do not have to do any further engineering on the Citroforce itself. Mm -hmm. Good news. How about the installation? Uh, second touch point. Well, the Citroforce since it is one system, a well, complete hydraulic system in one package, is pre-installed, pre-filled, pre-configured in our factory location and is shipped that way to you. So when you get it, you basically have to take it out of a grate, put it in mechanically, connect the electrics, configure the controls, mm -hmm. and you're ready to move. And how about the productivity? The Citroforce has a speed variable pump built in, thus it has a Citronics inside. And that, of course, helps the Citroforce to be very energy efficient. Another point is that since it is that compact, you just have a few liters of oil in that. And that, of course, helps it to be energy efficient, to be sustainable, environmental friendly, my environmental friendly as well. <laughs> Difficult word. <laughs> yes, but it's groundbreaking anyway. So, well, last touch point. What about minimizing the downtime? Well, the, of course, the Citroforce, we put in the connectivity into our Citroforce as well. And so you have a possibility to monitor, actually, um, the condition, the status of the Citroforce during operation, uh, your digital multimeter again. So it really makes the impression that you got each and every aspect covered. Good job. Well, thanks Quite so much. impressive. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, well. Hi, oh. Till and Maxie. Sorry to interrupt you. Oh. Hi, Next. Hi, Next. <laughs> I was following the launch and your presentation to the new Citroforce, 
And I just wanted to add something important. Okay. What is you it? You forgot to mention that the Citro Force will also be available with the Citro Connect in the future. Oh. Really? L luckily, Next was, was... So thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Next. No <laughs> problem. It was a pleasure to join the show and to oh. assist you today. Goodbye. Bye, Next. Take care. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Well, well, what a news. Well, yeah, yeah, Next is absolutely right. I forgot about that point. Um, when, when we talked about the, the touch point, minimize your downtime, yeah. Um, at the moment, we are working on bringing Citro Connect to the Citro Force as well. And that will allow you to monitor the condition of that self-contained mm -hmm. uh, self server hydraulic access from anywhere in the world, just with your browser, with your smart device, with your notebook. When will it be available? Most important question. Well, the Citro Force itself, uh, the official launch is today. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Citro Connect will be available uh, later next year. Okay, cool. So I'm totally convinced. We're having thousands of questions. So let's give it a go. Here's our Q&A session. So, as I already mentioned, yes, we have a lot of questions coming in. Um, I'll start right away with the first one. What information and data do you need from me to make a proper Citroforce drive sizing for my application? Um, well, what you can focus on when you want to use the Citroforce is actually the movement. That means what we need from you is how fast do you want to move, what's your cycle, What's the force you need? And uh, with that, we have a configurator. We are putting together the Citro Force system, which fits your needs. And on top of that, we can also configure certain options into that, like uh, security um, safety levels uh, up to class E, um, safe brake control. Uh, and you can get also all the accessories, um, cables and things like that you need. So you basically get everything you need to make the movement in one big package. What competences and qualification in regards to hydraulic and electric technology I need to design and connect mm. the Citroforce into my machine? Well, that's the nice, one of the nice things with the Citroforce. Since it comes pre-configured and pre-filled, pre-assembled, um, you basically just have to do a mechanical connection and you have to do an electrical connection. Uh, mm -hmm. But you don't need any specific in-depth know-how mm -hmm. on, on hydraulics or any other technology. So the audience is really excited about the Citroforce. Here's another one coming in. How do I commission a Citroforce? Uh, well, as I mentioned, pull in mechanical connection, electrical connection, and um, some configurations, and you're ready to go. Good news. Unfortunately, we are running out of time. Oh. So if you have questions left regarding the Citroforce, the product experts and our expert shade are waiting for all your questions and they will be happy to provide you with further information. So, wow, one and a half hour, hours nearly done. We are drawing to a close. Yeah, yeah. Well, one thing I would like to mention before we close the show today, um, you know, we, we developed this vision of connected hydraulics, but a vision is nothing without a content. So I really would like to use the opportunity to thank all the colleagues at Bosch Rexford worldwide who have grouped together to fill this vision with life and to make connected hydraulics become a reality. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, together, true greatness knows no limits, and the future looks indeed bright as a Bosch Rexroth partner. I think it's a good time for a summary. Well, you know, you have been with me on stage since now nearly one and a half hours. Uh, what are you taking home with you? Oh, well, uh, this is easy, uh, because we had the voting at the very beginning, mm -hmm. where we asked you what is most important for you. Is it sustainability, profitability, or time to market? And you told us that you support all three aspects, right? Uh, absolutely, Okay, yeah. so it's easy to engineer a hydraulic system. This is what I learned so far. Mm -hmm. You speed up uh, the installation. This, of course, improves the productivity and... Yes, you help fast and easy. 
Well, you could start right away at Bosch Rexroth here. Uh, yes, cool, I'm hired. Uh, well, probably we see each other again soon. But yeah, talking about this, when do I have the chance to meet Connected Hydraulics and the whole team once again? Yeah, uh, right after this show, use for opportunity. Our experts are standing by uh, to answer all your questions. Uh, and so use the opportunity to go to the expert chat and um, ask all the questions you have. Yes, don't forget also to go to the download area where you find also the link to our anniversary movie. So thank you very much for participating. Thank you very much, Till. It was quite fun being with you on stage. Well, pleasure was mine. Maxi, thanks so much. <laughs> thanks to the audience. Have a great day. Yeah, so today you have had the chance to convince yourself Bosch Rexroth is the result of an ambitious idea. Never stop improving. And I hope you were able to notice that this was also our goal for today. So thank you very much for tuning into this session. Goodbye from Germany. Take care.